So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mimi uh, to give her keynote presentation. Thank you. I'm going to go into my creative process and what internally and externally happens. So my external process, this is me and my studio. Three main things, technology, instruments, and live performers. So my technology is Logic Pro, my, my computer, my virtual instruments, everything that I use digitally to morph my sounds. My instruments, so piano, my human voice, um, guitar, harp, all the, the acoustic instruments you would think of. And then my live performers, whoever, if I have a budget, I'm able to hire and bring my scores to life. Now, these internal tools, which I was kind of tapping into, emotion is key. So one of the main things that I find so profound as an artist is that I'm basically a magician with what happens to me in my life. So if something really bad happens, I feel it intensely, but I think, how can I transform this into art? So if, you know, as we walk through life, we have to be desensitized to some degree. If our feelings are hurt or if we get really angry, we can't just freak out. I mean, sometimes we can, but we're not allowed to. But with art, we literally can take the worst day of our life, sit down, and just make gold out of it. So, so much of the horror game that I showed you, I was drawing from my real life. You know, especially being in a dark, haunted place. I grew up in LA, and one of the scariest things that's happened to me is somebody following me home. Like, if you're a girl, you know, that's absolutely terrifying. So, literally, I know firsthand what it's like to have something dark and creepy follow me. So when I'm sitting in my studio, before I even touch my piano and I'm experimenting with my sounds, I think of what fear feels like. What, what does paranoia feel like? And then I start to think of sounds that can emulate it. Is it silent? Because a lot of the time, when you're, you're terrified, silence plays a huge factor. So giving your score space, but then having stingers and loud sounds come in and pierce you. So really tapping into the nuances of my emotions really help. Now, empathy. Working with developers that have a vision. It's so important that we're a creative team and that we go back and forth with what the vision is of the developer, of the writer, of the artist, and then to me, where I'm able to hear things and feel things, and we go back and forth. So sometimes I have a temp score, and the developer will say to me, well, I want it to sound like this. So I'll sit with the temp score, and I'll say, I totally know what you're going for, but this is how I'm seeing it. I'm, I'm hearing it a different way. So then that's when I tap into my imagination, and I go within, and I say, okay, I know the emotion, I know the style, I know the vibe, but where is my creative voice going to come through? And so a way that I tap into my imagination is my creativity and my, I, I sit and I close my eyes and I meditate. And in silence, we're able to literally explore universes inside ourselves. So to go into that, I know it sounds crazy, but when, when you go to sleep, if any of you dream, you know, you have worlds that you explore. When I dream at night, I dream of colors, I dream of places that I've never been to. I, there's, there's so many incredible ideas that I have. So using meditation where I'm consciously focused on me without the outside world, and I put myself into a game where, say I'm in outer space, what does it feel like to be in outer space? Trying to tap into the colors, the feelings, the sensations. What does a nebula look like? What does it feel like? I score for a, a sci-fi game series that's set in outer space. So when I was scoring that, I really went into my dream state and was feeling the textures and the colors. So tapping into my creativity has been number one force in trying to create a vision that's unique and different from everything else I've worked on. So my intuition, this is where my artistic voice comes through. Your intuition is that little feeling inside of yourself that says, that's my impulse, that's how I wanna do things. So part of working with my intuition is canceling out that inner critic that says, 
you know, you can't afford to hire that musician or, you know, that's already been done before or that's too outside the box. When my intuition moves through me, that's when I, I can hear something like a cello shine through and I think, you know, I don't have a budget to work with this cellist, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it anyway because I know it's going to make the score extra special and then that could even enhance the game where the developers get more inspired to write more levels. So, I mean, it's like a, a, a snowball effect. If I trust my inner instinct, that's where the magic happens. Inspiration. Inspiration is literally what gets us to work 14 to 16 hours a day on deadlines, working multiple projects at the same time. If we're not inspired, it's hard to do anything. So how do you tap into your inspiration? When I'm working with my emotions and I'm able to draw upon my own life, if I'm tapped into my developers and their vision, I already have inspiration there. I'm using my imagination, I'm getting creative, I'm thinking outside the box. I'm using my intuition. What, what do I deeply feel called to do without limitations? How, how can I play with this idea? That literally gives me so much to work with before I even sit down at a piano. So, to dive deeper into emotion, I create music like I'm painting. So instead of colors, I use emotions. So to understand the human psyche and working with fear and terror and paranoia, you have to understand the bare basics of the human psyche. So we have the polarity of feelings. We have positive emotions and we have negative emotions. And then we have our primary emotions, which is happiness, sadness, joy, fear, anger. And then you get complex, nuanced emotions. So how do we evolve happiness? Joy, cheerfulness, euphoria, ecstasy. What do these things sound like? You can have a major scale, which is the bare bones fundamentals of music theory that emulate happiness. But how do you create euphoria? What does that sound like? What about fear? How do you create nervousness? How do you create horror? Feeling that. And then getting complex with it. So say, you know, you have an RPG and you've literally gone through hell to get to the end. You, you battled and you're a warrior and you're just tired. So at the end, you're successful. You wanna feel success in the end credits, but you've, it's taken so much to get there. So it's weighted with fatigue. It's weighted with sadness and longing for all that you've lost, everybody that's died along the way. So how do you mix success with failure, happiness with pain? So. A lot of what goes into me crafting my music is feeling multiple emotions at the same time and getting unique with my approach to shaping how they sound like. So I'm going to play for you an example of positive emotions. And I'm sure you know this. It's one of the most iconic melodies of all time. So you can feel with bare bones, 8-bit music, light, happiness, and excitement. <laughs> Guys recognize that one <laughs> yeah but look it's it's so basic to tell you didn't you feel the happiness the lightheartedness literally and it took like maybe a series of 13 notes to tell you now let's tap into the dark polarity how do we feel negativity dark ominous dangerous <laughs> feel the difference so you can you can watch what's going on but if you don't have the music you can't feel it so that's what's so fun so emotional themes help define a game's environment and experience so that's why music is so powerful so moving into more complex emotions how do you work with something that is more real life something that is is that we've all related to so in the game, The Lighthouse, I had to score for a funeral. And little backstory, this detective that we're playing as, in present day, he's searching for a missing girl that disappeared. But what I love about games that are very story-driven 
are that we get backstory on the characters. We get to feel and see things differently in a deeper level. So Detective Irvine, who's our lead character, had a daughter who passed away when she was six years old. Now the whole prologue of the game is seeing the little girl, seeing how beautiful his life was until this little girl passed away. And when she passed away, Detective Irvine lost his mind. He started drinking heavily, his marriage fell apart, and he just lost his will to live. So part of me crafting this scene was understanding I need to tap into sadness, but you can be sad when you go outside and you want to go to the beach, but it's pouring rain. That's a surface sadness. That's like a disappointment sadness. How do you write for loss? How do you write for grief and loneliness? So I'm going to play you the level and tell you how I crafted it with the developers. So part of what was really interesting about working on this specific level was I didn't have the game to play with yet. All I had was the synopsis and the imagery. So I had the picture of the grave and then I had the breakdown of Detective Irvine and him losing his daughter. So I went to my piano and I crafted something that made me feel like pain. And, and I chose a delicate piano, because piano can totally sound different. You can have rock piano where it's bright and, and, and loud and, and expressive, or it can be muted and delicate. And so this was the loss of a child. And so in my own life, I've, I've experienced a lot of loss. And so the piano to me spoke, and the delicacy of it was, was with my empathy relating to Detective Irvine, in that this was, this was a quiet type of sadness. Now what was interesting was the level wasn't built yet. So I crafted this theme, I gave it to the developers, and then they built the environment art and then placed my cue in the game. We watched it together when it was fully built and my song was a lot longer than it is there. When you first see the level, you see the shadows and the artwork and then you hear rain and there's silence. That was both of our choice. Music sometimes gives you too much. So knowing when to pull back and edit is really powerful because when you're thinking of loss, there's, there's an absence there. There's a silence and, and a, it's almost like a deafening quiet. So I pitched it to the developers that I wanted to just hear the rain. It was more powerful to just sit in the silence of the, the totality of what had happened. And then when the player goes and activates the yellow lily and puts it on the grave, then the music is able to define the grief. The melody can then take us and say, this is what it happened, and then ending on one final chord saying, now it's over. So music is its voice within itself. And so when you have some, sometimes too much music, it takes away from the, the arch of the scene. So going from silence to foley of the rain and then the music, we felt was much more powerful to emulate the whole experience of loss. So how do we create fear and terror and something otherworldly and haunting? So this is when we get to the lighthouse and we're at the abandoned property. And part of what I was talking about with my imagination and tapping into my senses is I don't want to just feel terror. I want to feel my environment. So in this setting, it's cold, it's dark, it's dense, and it's creepy. So I wanted to create something that felt like that, but also 
we're going to be outside and the main key of this game is the lighthouse. So we have a lighthouse and what does a lighthouse do? It rotates with light. So it's cyclical. So I wanted to come up with something that felt like it was pulsing and just messing with your head. So I'm going to play you the level and then go into how I created it. when you're exploring the outside and that dun, dun, that was the lighthouse so we were going back and forth thinking should we have found sound like a steam engine or you know some type of actual you know sound that we wanted to record with the mic I didn't want that I, I was thinking I wanted something that sounded like inhuman so I crafted in my synthesizer bunch of different layers of like these weird effects but they're, they're musical but they're they're atonal so they don't have melody so we crafted that as the lighthouse and then I was thinking what could this evil presence sound like and I trusted my intuition I just felt like yelling and screaming into my microphone I didn't know why it sounded really silly and my dogs thought I was insane and I literally recorded myself howling and just layer upon layer and then putting reverb on it and all of a sudden I had this weird kind of synthy ethereal creepy sound come out and that became ultimately the sound of evil throughout the game so it's so fun to play with your imagination and what could literally make you feel that and that leads me to my final thoughts. So, number one thing with creativity. I'm expressing myself through music, but I'm sure everybody in this room is a creator. So, the number one thing is embrace your emotions. Because the deeper you feel something, the more you're going to connect to your audience. Your emotions are gold. So if you get sad or angry or something's bothering you, don't shove it away. Save it for your art. Save it for your story because that's how people connect with it. Think of your favorite songs, think of your favorite games. They make you feel something. So when you're creating something, it's powerful to use your own life experiences and express it. Because ultimately, even if it's a fun game and it's whimsical, think of Mario. The overall arc of Mario is that he's a hero and he's saving the love of his life from this demonic creature that keeps stealing Peach, right? So technically it's like a horror game. It's terrifying, but the music makes it fun. But it's it's mirroring real life. You know, if, if, if the one that got away, it's, it's, it's about heartache. So in your own creative way, express your life, express what happens to you because that what's, that's what resonates with people. Explore your imaginations. You know, being alone is really powerful because there's so much external stimulation. We're always, you know, looking at things, reading things, we're on our phones, we're on our computers, but you have a whole world inside of you where the deeper you explore that, that's where the really incredible unique visions come from. I've spent so much time just alone reflecting on not just my life, but, but just dreams and visions I've had. I write in a journal. I'm constantly just trying to explore because my goal is to keep creating things that move people and inspire people and you know out of everything that's ever been written there are similarities but I think each and every one of us has a unique voice and a unique perspective on the world so the more that we get in touch with who we really are we're able to bring that unique perspective forward and create something new and fresh to the industry so lastly express yourself authentically you know, don't be afraid to be yourself. If you're weird, if you're unique, you know, that's a blessing. 
when I was in high school, I had very little friends. I was really kind of the outcast, but I, I loved music so much. I would go to my piano and I would express myself. And that ultimately became my career because I, I found who I was in, in all of the things that weren't fun at the time, like being alone and kind of not knowing how to relate to the world. Diving into that, it gave me so much creativity. So sometimes, you know, being in those odd, awkward moments in your life give you the greatest inspiration. So embrace your uniqueness, speak your truth, and just be fearless because all of you have so much to offer this world. This world needs art. It's what makes people happy. It's what keeps us, you know, waking up day after day because, you know, gaming is such a powerful experience. And I'm a gamer myself. I'm not just a composer. I play games to have fun and escape, but I also play games for my, ment my mental health. I play games to relax. I, I play games to, you know, find peace and release my stress. So all of you as creators have that capacity to give somebody a, an outlet and a platform to find peace within themselves and to have a better day. So thank you and thank you for your patience with all the technical difficulties. <laughs>
getting something out because even if it's not going to work, I'm, I'm putting in the work. And the more that I'm accessing that, then I say, okay, I'm going to save this. I'm going to toss that. Now I'm going to keep going because one bad idea or one scratch idea can end up turning and evolving into something incredible. So it's just number one thing for me are my emotions. How do I feel today? And it's hard. Sometimes we don't even know how we feel. So that's why I'm so into having time alone to, to understand who you are and what makes you tick because that's where you find your inspiration. And if you're inspired, you don't have writer's block. So getting in touch with those muscles inside helps. Hi, you first and then at the end. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. I'm gonna go into that. You know what one thing I think we all need to do for each other all the time? Just constantly reinforce how cool we all are. Seriously, because there's not enough of that in this world. All of us, you all are so awesome. I'm grateful for you to be here. I'm grateful you're in school. I'm grateful you're creative, just as a fellow human being. You know, so it is so powerful that you're just here today and you're doing what you're doing. Because there's a lot of weird stuff out there, but you, you guys are good, you know? So thank you. And, and, and to give each other compliments, you know? Sometimes I know with social media, it's hard to like connect in person sometimes, but like just giving, giving each other like a smile, like I like your sweater, or, like, you know, giving each other that reinforcement, it's so powerful. So that really meant a lot to me. Thank you. <laughs> At the end? for the specific voice, EQ on the specific voice. Working with voice, you're, we're all different. So interesting with my own voice, I never thought I could sing. I discovered that I could sing in high school and it was by accident. I just recorded my voice and I wanted to see how I could sound. And it was okay, but I learned like, if I, if I cut off the bass of me and I boost the treble, I'm a soprano. So I'm accentuating the higher frequencies of my voice. And then when I put reverb on top of that, I have overtones naturally. So you have to sculpt and experiment with your own instrument. So it's just a lot of getting in, in, in logic or Cubase or whatever you're using and just experiment and play with what makes you sound good and what makes you feel good, you know, because sounding good is relative. You know, it's all about what feels good. So just keep experimenting and see what works. And then also tutorials on YouTube are incredible to just see like, what do your favorite artists do? How do they treat their voice? What, what, what do they do? So you can do a mixture between what you like and then what professionals do. Hi. Oh gosh. Um, so my favorite game of all time that I still listen to, I don't know if you'll know this game, it's an RPG from the 80s called The Secret of Mana. You know that? Yes! Oh, that's that literally like, and I can't pronounce the composer's name so I'm not gonna embarrass myself, but if you, if you, if you Google The Secret of Mana, it's one of the most beautiful 8-bit scores I've ever heard. I got this game when I was seven years old. I literally put it in my console. I was really too young to play games. I played Mario, but I'm not a good gamer. So I ended up just watching the title screen for like three hours listening to this because it was like before YouTube, you know, so I couldn't loop it. So I have my Super Nintendo and I'm like literally listening. I'm like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And I'm sound sensitive. So like I was tearing up and I like went to my piano. I was trying to figure out the line. And then when I actually started playing the game, it was an open world RPG. I was used to linear like Mario. So I'm exploring like the world and the music was changing and the music was incredible in the game. And I ended up not even playing the game. I would just go to different regions to listen to the music. So, <laughs> so like that, that's still like my favorite. I have chills right now thinking about it because it's, it's, it's so powerful and I listen to it. Like if I have a bad day, I go to that and I literally listen to it to just like get inspired with my seven year old self when life was like magical. <laughs> Yay! 
<laughs> I think it's a gift. So you guys, I, I, I think sensitivity is our strength. I think it's a superpower. So much of us since we're kids are conditioned to not feel. So I am extra sensitive. So that's like been a curse because I grew up thinking, gosh, what's wrong with me? Like I cry at everything. But I was writing deep art that was moving people. And as a songwriter, people would write me listening to when I would cry into my piano and feel things too, too much and say, well, you help me not kill myself today. And I'm like, well, then my sensitivity is pretty awesome if like I'm helping people in that way. So it's like, you know, to feel things deeply is hard because that means you, you cry more, things are abrasive. If somebody hurts your feelings, you feel it too deeply. But that's why art is so powerful. So if you feel things deeply, you're a gifted artist and, and it's really a privilege to the world. So shifting your perspective and not thinking crying is bad, crying, you know, the sky cries when it rains, you know, we, we, we have to cry. It's, it's, it's a great thing to do. So just owning your sensitivity and knowing it's a superpower. So you personally creating an influence and an impact on other people. Number one thing, be yourself. Be yourself, whoever that is. And it doesn't matter how many people listen to you. It's that you're yourself and you're living your best self. Because if you aim for fame and you aim for clout and you aim for all that, you're not going into your authentic self. You're doing what everybody else has done. And they're doing themselves. So if you think of your favorite artist, they are them. So you have to be you, because if you tap into that, you know, that will naturally come. But that, that's why I'm so stressing emotion, because the one thing that does reach everybody is emotion. We all feel something. So that's how we connect with each other. If you make a friend, it's because you're feeling that friendship. You're, you have an identity with each other. So if, you, if you're authentic and you're saying, you know, I feel happy and excited today, I'm going to write that and you're really authentic with it, somebody's gonna feel that naturally. So you don't have to chase affecting somebody, you, you chase being authentic and deep within yourself. It totally makes sense. So what I love about game scoring versus film scoring is that it's multi-dimensional so when you're entering into different atmospheres and aspects of the game map or world, you have triggers. So I'm blending, instead of just writing one linear cue, I'm writing this knowing that I have to blend in when this, this enemy comes or this different region triggers this different, it, it, everything has to blend together. So it's weird, but when I'm writing a score that has a tapestry like that, where it's more of an open world exploration, it's kind of like a clothing line. You know, you have your different patterns that all blend together. So my different instruments that all weave through and work together because things can't clash. You can feel it when they clash, you know? So if something's high energy and I'm in this peaceful kind of exploration zone, but then something high intensity comes, still it blends sonically with what with that whole change so that it starts morphing together. So it's, it's, it's so fun to create like that because it's, it's not linear. Like I'm gonna sit and write a song. I'm literally thinking of all the different worlds at the same time and how they're all gonna blend with this one song that I'm writing. I hope that answers your question. Isn't that, it's the mystery of being a human being. How, how can you feel terrified but energized and ready to fight something? You know, how, how is that possible? So feeling those feelings and then writing something that is upbeat and high energy, because when something's upbeat and high energy, you know, music can make you want to go to the gym when you're laying down. You're like, ah, oh, I got to do something, you know? So having that intensity with the vibrations, but then also using minor modes shaping the sound so it's dark and ominous so that you feel the evil but you're still energized at the same time. That's how you kind of sculpt it with music. Hi, yes.
That's a really good question. Um, I, first, I go with deadlines because professionally speaking, if I have something that's due in a week, I got to do that first. And what's hard about that is that if that's not what is inspiring me, but I got to do it, that's when I tap into my internal tools. Because as a professional, sometimes you got to do stuff you don't want to do. So deadlines is number one. Then if I have the luxury, I go with what I'm inspired by because that's what you want to work on. So it's really juggling that. I have a set schedule where I work from home, but I have a whole list of like priority, priority, priority. But then number one thing I want to stress to you guys, I work really hard, but I rest really hard. So I will put in like days upon days of like nonstop. And then I will take a week off and do nothing because it is so important. If you're not taking care of your physical body, your mental health, having friends, having relationships, living real life, what's the point of anything? Really, like what is success if you're not happy, you know? So taking care of yourself while you're working that hard, that's how you do it. So it's, it's challenging for me because sometimes I, I, I take on too much. And so then I realize like once I'm done, like I'm gonna have to say no. You know, because when you're when you're young and you're hungry, you have to take on everything, you know, so you got to do that. But then you got to find the balance, too. So it's all just trial and error with it. Uh, what inspired me to compose music for games? So I'm a gamer. I've been playing games since I was five years old and I've gone to games, like I said, for fun and enjoyment, but also for my mental health, for stress relief, for, for just an escape from reality. So I have a massive respect for games. And as a songwriter, when I've started my career, I was writing from my imagination and my life and seeing the effect that my music was having on people. I got the offer to start singing in games. I had some of my songs licensed in games and I thought, you know, why not score for games? Because if I have this effect in my music and I'm enjoying it so much and I respect the art form, I'm inspired by visual. I, I, I literally write to pictures for fun because it inspires me. What a beautiful industry to, to collaborate in. So that ultimately inspired me. Thank you.